Okay, so I want to look at a couple more things from chapter four. Uh, real quick video looking at equality. Um, when we're trying to establish a condition of equality, we can use the equals equals only on primitives. So I just want to just stress this again. Uh, that would be like integers, doubles, booleans, characters, etc. In general, um, we have to use a method of the object. So um, as we go forward, we'll write some of these methods ourselves, but for string objects, um, in this case, let's call the object we're talking about string one, and we're comparing it to string two, we use the dot equals method, string one dot equals, and then as a parameter, it gets sent string two, returns true if the two strings are equal, or we can use uh, equals dot equals ignore case, which will is not case sensitive, so it returns true whether or not capitalization is there or not. Um, another thing to be careful of with equality is that for doubles, because they are stored as approximations, um, we generally want to use the difference between them. We want that difference between the two doubles to be small. So um, oftentimes you won't know which approximation is larger, so you're actually looking at the, the difference the absolute value of the difference between them to be small. So you use the math um, method, absolute value, and you subtract the two values, value one minus value two, and say it's smaller than some predetermined value like 0 0.0001. That will return true if both the values are within one ten thousandth of each other. Okay, so um, to illustrate these differences, We'll do a quick example. Um, I'm going to write a class that will ask the user to input their name and then an integer between 1 and 10 inclusive. So that would include both 1 and 10. And then ask them to divide that number by 3, rounding it to four decimal places. Um, the program will then output whether the user has the same name as me, John, whether they guessed the number that I was thinking of correctly, which I'm going to think of the number seven, and whether they rounded their double correctly. OK, so um, jump over to Eclipse. And I set up a new class already called Test Equality. Um, public Static Void, putting it in Chapter 4. Anytime you want to follow along and hit pause, feel free to pause the video. It would be good to code along with it, especially if you're not familiar with these ideas. Um, okay, so I think I'll just use main just because I want to just illustrate a couple of things in here. Um, we're going to need a scanner, so import um, java.utility. I could put some commenting above. I guess I'll leave it out because just to make the video a little shorter. Um, so let's set up our scanner console. Um, you want to ask the user to input their name. In a print statement. And then we'll assign that name to a string called name. So dot next. Then we'll ask the user to input. Uh, let's check that. Let's just make sure this works. Enter your name, John. OK, it works. And it printed my name out. Perfect. So I can now get rid of that print statement. 
And now I want to ask the user to enter an integer between 1 and 10. Inclusive, meaning go ahead and include both of the endpoints, 1 and 10. I lost my parenthesis there. And I'll assign that to an integer, call it number. And we could test that. And it should be asking my name. And asking for an integer between 1 and 10. So I didn't put any checks in on whether or not they actually are entering an integer, but um, we're going to put a, you know, well, we're going to test whether that integer equals seven. We're not going to put anything in this in this method yet that tests whether what they actually entered is an integer. Um, that's going to be in the beginning of chapter five, and maybe we'll come back to this code and modify it to show those things next. Okay, so that worked. Um, as I delete that, if you look behind me in the window there. You can see the snow coming down. Um, so I had said that it looked like we would, would be in school tomorrow. Now I don't know. It's supposed to rain later, but we'll see. Okay. Um, so one more. Uh, uh, I guess we don't need any more. Okay, we do need another input from the user. We want them to divide their number. Enter your number divided by three, rounded to three decimal places, uh, four decimal places. I'm going to change this to uh, divided by three. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to let the user know whether they have the same name as me, whether they guessed the same number I was thinking of, and uh, whether their value divided by three was rounded correctly, or even divided correctly. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, first, let's check if the names are equal. So we'll go, if so name dot let's do an equals ignore case to John We'll output a line of code saying we have the same name. Uh, but maybe we should say something if we don't have the same name. So that guy is closing my if. I could say else. What do we want to tell them? Tell them that we don't have the same name. Good time to test it. Enter your name, JT. Enter an integer between one and ten, five. 
Enter your number divided by three. Ah, that's, well, that's gonna get entered when they enter their number there. That'll take it to the next line. So I need to change that. And then we don't have the same name, which we don't. Okay, so that, oh, I doesn't really trust it though. I should, uh, to test it, I should actually enter John in. So John like that, uh, five. Uh, now it says we do have the same name. Oh, I forgot to get the, uh, notice it's printing this right after that. It's not waiting for the double to be entered just because I forgot to do a double here. Uh, double, let's call it rounded number, rounded value. And we're going to go console dot next double. Okay. Um, so that's why this is running on the same line as that output there, because I forgot that line of code. Okay, but we got that guy. Now let's let them know whether or not we guessed the same number. So if <clears throat> number, so number is a primitive, I can use the equal sign, if number is equal to uh, seven, we can let them know that they guessed the number. Correctly. And if not, else we can let them know the number was seven. There'd be a way to modify this program. We're going to talk about random in the next chapter, um, where maybe they try to guess a random number between one and ten, and then see if they guessed the random number correctly. Um, okay, so that guy is done. Let's run it. Enter your name, so Robert. Enter an integer between one and seven. Let's go with seven. Enter your number divided by three. So seven divided by three is 2.3333. We don't have the same name, but you did. Oh, it shouldn't say they guessed the number correctly. It should say you guessed the number correctly. Maybe this one should say you guessed the wrong number. You guessed wrong. The number was seven. Okay, and now we have to test whether or not their double was entered correctly. So this is where we want to use the um, math difference of the absolute value. So we're going to say if math dot absolute of, so it's going to be their double, which is called rounded value. minus their number, which is called number, divided by three, but I need to go 3.0 to turn it into a double. And probably wants me to do something in there. Oh, if, that value is less than 0 0.0001. What should we do? Tell them they rounded correctly. And if it's not that, 
we can tell them they rounded incorrectly. And actually, you know, they're dividing and rounding. So they've divided and rounded correctly. Down here, we would know they did one of them wrong. They divided or rounded incorrectly. So again, you know, what am I doing in this problem? Um, <laughs> it seems like a lot of code to do this testing. Let's go back up to the top. We have a bunch of code to get their input. So they're entering their name. Uh, maybe I'll leave that spaced out. Entering their name, they're entering an integer, they're entering a double. And then we're checking, does their name equal my name? So that's using the method name.equalsIgnoreCase. Uh, if they are, we tell them it's the same. If they don't, we tell them it's different. Then we're checking if their number is the same as the number I was thinking of, which is seven. If it is the same, we tell them it's the same. Otherwise, we tell them they guessed wrong and the number was seven. And now finally we're checking, so that's using the double equal sign. Finally, we're checking the equality uh, that the difference of the two values is small. And if that difference is small, then they divided and roundly correctly, rounded correctly. If that difference is not small, then they either divided or rounded incorrectly. Okay, so we should run it with all true tests, and then we should run it with maybe all false tests, false tests, see what happens. So I'll go entering my name of John. I'll enter seven, enter 2.3333. So we have the same name, we guessed the number correctly. Ah, again, I wrote they divided and rounded correctly, but it should say you divided. Because I'm talking to the user, not to you, the coder. They divided, you divided and rounded correctly. I will run it again. Now this time doing all incorrect answers. So then JT. Number between one and 10, let's go with six. Enter your number divided by three, rounded to four decimal places. So this is a little tricky because 2.0000 is the correct value, six divided by three. Um, so I didn't, I didn't actually, oh, I did round, I did divide and round correctly. Um, what would happen there if I just entered as two? Let's see. I think it should still be correct. Enter your name, JT, six. Instead of entering 2.000, let's just enter two. You divided and, and rounded correctly. So because I'm looking at not seven over three, I'm looking at the number divided by three, it was correct. Um, looks like we need to test one more thing there. What if I do this again and I run it with the number two as my input? JT, between one and 10, let's enter the number two and now let's enter 2.666. It should be 6667. I'm gonna enter 6666. It's gonna say it's, ah, I ran it incorrectly because it should be, no, sorry. Number was two, it should just be 0.666. I think it's gonna, ah, what happened? Wrong button. Sorry, run this again. E two, zero point six 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 six. This is gonna say, rounded correctly, even though it should be 0.6667. So if I wanted it to be a seven, I think I'd have to add um, maybe one more zero here. I mean, that is within one ten thousandth. So it, it does do what it sort of asked it to do. Um, what happens if I add a zero there? 
name t2 0.6666 and then I'm going to round incorrectly because it should have been a 7. Uh, something's weird there, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, that's just having to do with what, what number. I wasn't really testing the division. I, I'm testing whether those numbers are very close together. So, and, and they actually are. So I'm not going to worry about, uh, I, there's some weird littleness in the, in the last digit being not really rounded to the right value, but um, make that a two, then it would handle it. Okay. Um, I think that's it for this content. Um, go back up to the code. Again, all I'm testing really is, well, get, obviously getting a bit of practice with the console, and then uh, the three different types of equality here that I'm using equals ignore case, and really dot equals will be used for all objects that are non-primitives. Uh, the double equal sign for a primitive, in this case an integer, and then for potentially rounded values, uh, doubles, their estimated values, so we are going to use math dot absolute value of the difference. Okay, and I will upload this program so it shows up uh, in the in, both in the in-class code and in the content with this video.